Hi everyone, you're welcome. There's something that I want to share with us this morning. And before we start, I want us to just say a word of prayer. Dear Lord God, we thank you for the opportunity to go into your word. And I pray this morning that our eyes of understanding is enlightened. We come to the full knowledge of who you are, who we are, what you expect from us, and how you want us to live in order to lay hold on the fullness of all that you have given to us. Thank you for this journey. Thank you because you speak through me. You will be edified. You will be blessed in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. You know, um, there's this, there's this word in my spirit that I want to share with us, and it is from my experience as a believer. It's from an, from my experience with God, and it is um, basically how we we kind of like trivialize or we we make devotion, seeking God waiting on god studying the word how we make it so casual how sometimes as believers we don't even do it at all <laughs> how we go on for days and months without talking to god without studying the bible how it becomes so boring how our our, our altar our family altar or our personal devotion life becomes so cold so lukewarm and sometimes we just continue that we just keep feeding our mind our bodies and we ignore Feeding, feeding our spirit we ignore feeding our 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 spirits man growing and seeking god and getting closer to god you know i'm sure every one of us who have been who have been a christian for a while or those of us who, who just became christians we've had those times when we just wake up and throughout the day you don't want to do anything spiritual like you don't even you don't even want to talk to god about anything you just want to go about your life feed your body feed your mind just play just free yes it's okay yeah because we are just all human anyway and um sometimes we can be we can feel so weak in our bodies and all of that but that is not the place god wants us to be where god wants us to be is to always be at the center of his will is to always be with him is to always fellowship with him we are spirit first of all we are spirit we have a soul and we live in a body but we can't be living the reverse like living as if you are just a body and you are just a soul and you don't have a spirit or you just remember that oh i'm a spirit once in a week when you go to church but primarily we are spirits primarily we are meant to be in the presence of god primarily we are meant to be so conscious of god so aware of his presence so aware of him so lost in his word so giving to him in prayers and fasting in the word that we keep growing we keep getting better You know, there was a time in my life where i was so dry i was it was a lot of routines and i got tired of the routines i moved states i moved from the state i was to another state i moved from the church i was to another church you know i i got that particular that particular state and i was so dry i was so dry to even pray was was a struggle when i, I started attending a new church it took me a long time to set to him like it took me almost two months to set to him and in those two months two months i did not do anything like seriously i didn't really pray i didn't really i was just living i was just eating i was just there i was looking for a job i was just there he was so dry as in you know and and because i had a foundation of um being a believer before then had worked with god you no know, i was even working with god then but that moment of dryness the only thing that kept me going was those seeds i sowed in the past the prayers i prayed in the past because there are times i would have a dream and I, in the, my dream i would see that god was trying to talk to me but i would wake up from the dream and i would just go i didn't bother i'll just leave it you know there are times i saw that god was going through every means to reach to reach me but i was my spirit was really dead in fact there was a day i was driving out and i could i could sense the presence of demons around me i've never felt it like that ever since that day you know i could sense that if I, I kept looking through my rear mirror like it was like some things were flying and moving with me and i could sense that god was trying to tell me that when we wait i'm trying to get your attention but i didn't i didn't have the strength to do anything until a bad day came you know when the bible says the evil day there's an evil day that comes and that evil day came and eat me because i was not in the center of god's will i was too weak 
I didn't have any strength. I wasn't real with my friends. I didn't tell anyone I was going through that moment. I wasn't even real with my husband. I didn't tell him that I'd been disconnected from God for a very long time. The evil day came. In fact, it was an evil week. That week, series of terrible events over and over happened to me. And I was completely broken. <laughs> As in, and I knew, I could hear God telling me that you didn't have to get to this point for you to respond to me. Fiery doubt of the devil didn't have to eat you. You didn't have to be attacked by the devil and be consumed by, by, his, by his schemes and his plans for you, for you to, to listen to me. I was trying to reach you. And you know, since that day, since that period, since that event and all of that, I realized that if you keep going on day in, day out, without truly seeking God, even if you are, if, as in without even doing the routine, you know, we say it becomes a routine. See, sometimes it's good to stick to the routine of just waking up in the morning and just going through your devotional and just praying a dry prayer. I'm telling you the truth. That is better than not doing anything. Proverbs 24 verse 10, which says that if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. The day of adversity for each one of us is different. My day of adversity, my experiences might not be as deep as yours. But if you fail, the days when trials come, the days when you lose your job and you lose your mind and you curse God, if that day ever comes on you, it means that before then, you were not storing up strength. It means before then, you were not building up your spiritual muscles. It means before then, you were, you were on the weight spiritually. You were not gathering any strength. Can we all remember Elijah? in um first kings chapter 19 um, elijah became so afraid because jezebel was going to kill him jezebel was out for him and he started running like he got to the wilderness and slept he was like god if i went and slept to walk on i got you know what kill me i don't want to save you again i'm tired and he slept off and the angel of god came tapped him and woke him i said see elijah eat and drink for the journey is far eat and drink because the journey is far elijah stood up he ate he drank after that he slept again the angel came the second time he said eat and drink because the journey is very far <laughs> he ate and drank again and bible says that elijah was able to go in the strength of that food for 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness as in god saw ahead and god saw that see elijah you need to eat the word of God is food and his spirit is water. We need to daily, daily moment, not just morning and night, not just five, ten minutes. That's what the Bible says that we should pray without season. Praying without season actually means that communing with God every minute, every time of the day, not just living life casually, not just, not just, you know, you're not just there passing time feeding your mind feeding your body and your spirit is dry there was this man of god that said that before he eats his physical food he ensures that he eats from the word of god he ensures that he drinks from the from god he drinks from god and he eats from god okay before i take any breakfast i'm going to ensure i study the word i'm going to ensure i i i, I pray in the spirit i drink from god's word from god's spirit and all of that then i now realize that it shouldn't just be for my breakfast before i put any food in my mouth any time of the day i should ensure i take my spiritual food i build my spiritual muscles see we might not you might not see yourself as a pastor as a preacher so maybe that's the reason why you do not take your relationship with god so seriously but even for your life for your career for your marriage for god expect you to build spiritual muscles to build up yourself spiritually because your marriage you can see ahead that in your marriage you would have the days when you need to wait on him for a child or for a job or for a breakthrough or for health condition or something god can see ahead of us see you sometimes we look at some people and you're wondering how is this person going through this phase and it is not showing how, how possible is it that this person is nursing a sick child and you do not know and their faith is growing? How is it possible? It's because before that season came, before that adversity came, they were building their spiritual muscles. Before that delay came, they, they knew how to wait on God. 
to live a consistent victorious life ha. you need to sow seeds now for the future you need to pray now when you do not have kids for when your kids will come i can remember there was a time in my life that myself and my husband we, we didn't have kids then and there was this project in our church back then the children's church budget this is the main church budget and we're asking ourselves okay so which one do you think which one should we support no we didn't have kids then and we, we 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 took that seed we prayed on it and we called our kids by their names because we already named them you know so we called them by their names and we started speaking into their future we started saying do you know what you children are going to prosper because of this seed you would never be sick you would as in we spoke we spoke ahead of them and i can tell you one is six the other is two and i can tell you that since the day they were born till now every word we've spoken ahead of them has come to pass so that is how we live life as victorious christians you build spiritual muscles for the days ahead Eph ephesians chapter 6 verse 13 it says therefore take up the old hammer of god that you might be able to withstand the evil day and having done all to stand see there is an evil day i'm not a prophetess of doom i'm sure if you've been on this earth for a while you will know there is that day that is called an evil day the day that it looks like all hell is let loose. The day it looks like God and the devil had a discussion like they had about Job. And God says, go, go. I trust my son. He's not going to, he's not going to forsake me. The day that it looks like everything is upside down. The days where you have prayed so much, you've trusted so much, you were going for the interview and they still said no. The days where you've trusted God so much for your health and it looks like your health is deteriorating. The days you give birth to a baby and your baby has a condition and you have to be in the hospital for the next nine months. This world, there are going to be tribulations. In this, We are in this world. But our consolation is that we are the sons of God and we are living our life from the mindset of victory. So even though our present trials and affliction looks like it's going to overcome us and overwhelm us and it's going to kill us but they are still light they are still going to pass away they are still temporary they're not it's not going to kill us so but for those days it is when it looks like god said i should get into this marriage or you were sure that you got a word even if you were not sure you got a word but you got into the marriage and after a while you're like god just have mercy on me redeem me redeem this marriage help this help us let this marriage work and it still did not work will you lose your faith now i was still, I was, I was talking with one of my friends the other day and I was like do you know how many people have gotten so angry with God and they were like God no no I served you I served you so much but yet this happened that happened no I'm not serving you again that is where the devil wants us to get to. the devil wants us to get to to get to a point where we will curse God and say God you're not real God you know what it's been a waste it's been a waste the only way to pass through this face through the at times and pull through is if before then you've been feeding your mind line upon line precept upon precept one and um, every morning every night during the day you read the scripture you meditate on it you come to you come on that scripture that says that it does not call the seed of jacob to serve him in vain and you're like ah. Is this in the Bible? It says that, that God has not called me. Where you see Jacob, you put your name. The Lord has not called me to seek me in vain. And you're like, really? So it means that all my services, all these years will not be in vain. And maybe the, the, the circumstances around you is looking like it's been in vain. Say, so, no, the Bible says, my seed, my labor, my work, everything, my service will not be in vain. So in the name of Jesus, I am not seeking the Lord in vain. So these years I've been fasting, it is not in vain. Even though it feels like it's in vain, no, it is not in vain. That is the way to live as a Christian. You should meditate upon this word day and night. Do not let the word of God depart from your eyes. Do not let it depart from your mouth. You meditate on it. You chew it. You say it. You declare it. Even though life is going this way and the word of God is here, you bring your life back to that word of God. And just be praising God. And just be singing psalms unto him. If you don't know the songs to sing, go on YouTube. You know, listen to Nathaniel Bassi. Listen to Snatch. These are songs that as you're singing, you are declaring the strength of of God when I was pregnant with my firstborn I was like wow thank God that there is actually a nine month period to prepare for this baby because it was still not sufficient for me to be prepared I was still not fully prepared when my baby came I was confused the baby will cry I was so confused what do you want change your diaper you want to as in I was so I was still not prepared I was like wow thinking that the whole of nine months was going to prepare me so what if I was not pregnant 
one day I just slept and woke up and I had a baby. <laughs> Panic would have killed me. I wouldn't have been prepared for it. But that is the way life is. God expects us to prepare. Stay on the word. Pray. To understand the true essence of seeking God. It is for yourself. It is to build spiritual muscles. It is to prepare you for the days ahead. I can remember when my dad passed on three years ago. Before it happened, before he passed on, you know, I started having some thoughts were coming through my mind. He wasn't sick, you know, it was a, all of a sudden kind of thing. Well, before that period when he passed on, like a month or so before then, things were happening. Thought about not having a father, how to cope with life were crossing my mind. Things were happening to me. I knew. So that when it happened, yes, I was shocked. Yes, I was broken. But I was not completely confused or hungry or, or lost. No. No, I wasn't. There was that strength. There was just that strength to go through that period. Especially the, the, the period when he died and before the burial and after the, during the burial and after the burial. There was a strength to carry me through. I realized that it was because of the foundation in the word. Some scriptures came to my mind that we do not grieve like those who are in the world. No, we do not. I will see him again on the res resurrection day. No, we do not grieve like those who do not have hope. No, I know I will see him again. There was, no, there was that period when I started meditating on God the Father, the Father to the fatherless. And it just came to me that, see, I have two fathers in heaven. Wow. As in, like, yes, I have two fathers in heaven. My earthly father who went to join my heavenly father. Wow. When you are so privileged, life is challenging. Things do not always go as planned. But God's word is constant. That is the only hope and anchor we have. That is the only assurance we have. So why would you go through a day, through a week, without going through the word? Who are you deceiving? It's to your detriment. What takes us through hard period, hard days? It is our spiritual stamina. That is what takes us through. That is that is what that is the reason why you can see a family A and family B have similar experiences. But family A did not make it, but family B made it. And you are wondering how? How come this did destroyed this family and they did not destroy this family? How come these people could work it out together and these ones could not work? Uh, do you understand that people will go through similar circumstances and come out with different experiences, different perspectives, different mindsets? It's because of their spiritual foundation. It's because of their spiritual growth. It's because of their spiritual muscles. How they've been building themselves the day in, day out. And I just want to encourage us today because hmm, that trial you're going through, that issue you're going through, you're not the only one going through it. There are so many people going through it across the world. What will determine your attitude towards that particular challenge you are going through is whether you've been building yourself or if you are building yourself. So if before now you have not been doing anything spiritually, you have just been feeding your soul, your body, and you have forgotten that you're a spirit, I want to encourage you today. Start from somewhere. <laughs> you just have to start. You don't know how to start, just start. You don't know how to pray, just pray. Just talk to God. God, help me. I surrender to you. I come to you. Help me. I've been lost. You found me. Help me. Help me. Help me come out of this confusion. Help me come out of this relationship. You know, some people have gotten so broken, so so discouraged. They dated Christian brothers, guys in church, and they didn't work out. And you're like, ah, even those guys in church, they are not good. I beg, let me just go and marry a guy. A nice guy. And you know what you're doing? You're allowing the devil to place, give you a script and you're acting your part out. Because the Bible says we should not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. We should, you cannot, light and darkness cannot be together. You can't say because you had a terrible experience with a brother in church, you want to go marry an unbeliever. It is the plan of the enemy to truncate your marital life and your destiny in all. If you have the word of God as your foundation, you will not choose the alternative that the devil is giving to you, making it, presenting it as if it is better than the word of God, than the real thing. The Bible says that the devil has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Anything outside the word of God is, is of the devil. Anything outside the word of God is out of faith and it is not of God. 
So it will not work. It might look like it is working. It might feel like it is working, but it is not God. So I just encourage us today to build our spiritual muscles, to wait on God, to have a day in the week that we fast, to have a day, to, to have times during the day where we just separate to God, unto God and we just seek him and talk to him to have a devotional to have a time with God an experience with God do it day in day out you will see how you will get better those of us who are going through hard times I just want to tell you to encourage you to hold on to just keep at it to just keep waiting your deliverance and your salvation will come it will come it will surely come God has not called you to seek him in vain God will not put you to shame you will not be put to shame that is a God said and I know that as we grow and as we do these things God will strengthen us I'm praying for you have a great day in all that you're doing today ensure that your mind is on God ensure that the atmosphere around you is teared up unto God God bless you